Welcome back everyone. Um, in the last part we created this low poly mesh of a stylized shield and now we're gonna work on the sculpting part. So for that I'm gonna duplicate each part and then also rename it. So from every um, low poly part we have we also have one mesh that we can sculpt and we still have the base mesh left over. To duplicate, just select one part that you want to duplicate, press Shift D and then right click to keep it in the same place as before and then repeat for the other um, objects you have. We need this duplicated version later on for baking and we only can do that because when we sculpt now our shield we're not going to change the geometry that much so we're just going to add some more details but the actual shape of the shield is staying the same, so we can do that. If you're really changing the shape, you would have to do a retopology in the end, and then you could actually work on your base mesh that you modeled right now, because you anyway have to um, yeah, re do a retopology again. But now we don't need to, so we can just duplicate it and then keep the low poly for later and then for baking also. When I um, duplicated one of the planks, I realized that I had some edges that were actually not belonging to the plank. So what I did is just hide everything else. I could see that one plank that was kind of affected and then go into edit mode, select those edges that were somehow surrounding it, deleting those one and then duplicating it. So after you finish this, you should have now from each object that we created for this shield, a new version, um, maybe with a name like high poly or I'm just shortening with HP um, and then just make the high poly versions visible and hide all the low poly objects. I mean right now they're still the same but we're gonna change that soon. Before we go into sculpting select all the wooden planks with shift and then enter edit mode and now we're gonna add just a little bit more geometry so it's gonna be easier for sculpting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the edges on the planks and then bevel them out so I get not that really sharp edges but just a bit of a more flattened out. And I'm just going to repeat that for each of the planks we have. So bevel you can always do with Control B, just pull them apart with the mouse and uh, repeat for the other ones. It doesn't have to be really precise so you don't have to do it for each plank the same. Um, you can also do it for the loops cuts we created. Um, in the middle of the planks and then just get some more geometry here. Now as soon as you beveled out all the edges you can add some more loop cuts giving the planks more geometry. So just use Control R and then your mouse wheel to define the amounts of loop cuts you want to have. And now we're good to go and we can sculpt our wooden planks. So we're just going to go back into object mode and we're going to hide everything except for one of those planks. Then make sure you have the one plank left selected and switch into sculpting mode. Before you dive now in directly into sculpting, first make sure to enable dynamic topology. That way you can sculpt and you always have enough topology that you need. I am going to use the constant detail with a detail size of 80. That way I always know how much detail I'm going to have and I'm going to use the crease brush. So now um, when you start sculpting you might want to change the brush size. You can do that with the shortcut F and then you just can start um, go ahead adding some small details of the wood. If you do it like I did you're going to see that you have symmetry enabled. Um, so that's one thing that you want to turn off. And in the top you can change two settings that are really nice if you have a graphic tablet. And these two settings are the pressure sensitivity. Um, with these two enabled you can see them at the top for beside the radius and the strength. Uh, you can draw a line and then if you don't press that much or that hard on the tablet it gets lighter and not that deep. So this way you can kind of when you, the line is ending it's getting smaller and thinner. Uh, I really like that, but of course that's only working if you have a gra graphic tablet, if you only have a mouse, that won't work. Um, but I think generally sculpting, it's really great if you have a tablet, doesn't matter which size or whatever, just having one, it's much more easier. For the edges of the plank, I'm going to switch to the flatten brush 
and then change the strength to zero. Now I can just paint over that. You can actually use also another brush for this. Just one that is working with dynamic topology. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add topology and then we can use shift to smooth out the edge because we have enough topology. So just use a brush, turn down strength to zero, paint over the part where you wanna um, have more topology and then you can use shift to smooth out that part. After that, we can go back to the crease brush again and add a few more detailed strokes to our wooden plank. At some point, it's nice to enable smooth shading and increase the resolution. I'm gonna increase it to 120 and then just go over each line that I drew just once more, giving it a bit more detail. Once we're finished with the plank, we can change to object mode and then select one of the other planks, preferable one that is at least like one space between them is free. And then go with that other plank into sculpting mode, turn on dynamic topology again, the resolution back to the starting value, for me that was 80, and then start sculpting again. This time uh, I'm gonna start with the flatten brush and just flatten out everything in the beginning. I realized that would be much easier and then in the end do all the stuff with the crease brush. So I used a flatten brush again to add some topology and then use shift to smooth out the plank. And if you do that in the beginning, you don't have to worry about smoothing out um, parts of the wood you already created. For this plank, I also tried out the smooth stroke option. Um, that is an option that helps you draw more straight lines. I mean, if you have a tablet, uh, I think you can do it also without this option, but um, it can give you some nice curves and some stable lines. Now, the reason why I left the other plank still visible is so when I started to draw those details into the woods again, I could see how um, detailed I went with them and I see how uh, deep, so I could try to mimic the same style again. And then it's just basically going over each line more and more times, getting a nice detail to it and making it look uh, similar to the first plank you created. And then at some point you can turn up the resolution back again. So I'm gonna go back to 120 and then go over each line once more, adding more detail to it, more topology, just um, like with the last plank. And as you probably can guess, we now gonna repeat that two more times for the two other planks.
When I was finished with all my planks, I realized as soon as I unhit them all that the first one I created was a bit lighter from the strokes. So for that one, I went back into sculpting mode and then made them more deeper so all the planks were looking more alike. Now, the last thing our shield or our wooden planks are missing is some scratches. For that, I'm gonna turn up the strength to completely 1 or 100%, however you want to see it, and change the curve for the fall off, making it more pointier. And now I can just scratch over the wooden parts. Uh, the only thing that is stupid, of course, now is that we cannot scratch, scratch over more than one plank. So this is, I guess, a disadvantage in this case, because we have to um, change into sculpting mode for that other plank to create the same scratch over there. Um, there's no option, at least I don't know of, that we can kind of select more planks and then go into sculpting mode. I hope they kind of edit that afterwards. But for now, we just have to add a scratch in one plank and then go back into object mode, select the other plank, go back into sculpting mode and kind of do the scratch on the other side too. And now finally comes the part that I love the most, or is actually, yeah, one of my favorites. Um, going back into the layout tab, so in object mode, and taking a look at what great work we did. Obviously, I only like this tab if the result is indeed looking good, but now it is, so we can um, work on the metal part of our object. So just select the metal ring and then go back to sculpting. Here we're gonna enable dynamic topology again and put the resolution back down to 80. Now with the flatten brush we can increase the strength and then um, work on that middle part to get that smooth out before we add some more detail to make it look like metal. So just gonna go around it, flatten it out. Um, you can use the shift also to smooth it out as soon as you have some topology. Maybe change also the curve like I did to fall off so it's a bit working more stronger. And then we're going to use the scrape brush um, to create this kind of flat look. So I'm just going to turn up the strength to one and I'm trying to aim or to get a look that is looking like someone was hammering this metal part. So I'm trying to get those, those flat areas but still getting a nice round shape of them. I mean, you see what I'm trying to get there, right? For the outer ring, you can still see the um, cylinder we created this from, so you can still see those edges. So I'm gonna go back to the flatten brush and now I'm gonna make use of symmetry. I started with using symmetry on all axes, but then I realized it wasn't directly on a set axis, like super um, positioned. So I just used the X and Y, but that's again, saving a lot of work, so that's nice. And for the inner, inner ring, um, I needed to turn up the resolution a bit, so I'm not destroying like that small little ring we created. When you're increasing the resolution like I did, just make sure that you're decreasing it later on if you're working on a bigger part again, where you don't need that much detail. Um, I also turned on sh uh, smooth shading at one point and then used a uh, crease brush to go around all the edges and sometimes you have some weird artifacts like you can now see on that bigger ring. Here you can get, just go over with one of the brushes with a strength of zero just to get topology there and then all that kind of weird artifacts will be gone. Same with with the wood, we want the metal to look used or like it has been used. First of all, uh, make sure to turn off symmetry again and then use the scrape brush with a strength of one to create those little indents. Um, in smaller ring, you can use a higher resolution, just adding a few and then on the bigger ring, uh, maybe decrease your resolution a bit again and then also add there some of them.
As we already did with the wood, we also can add some of those scratches to the metal part. So again, here I'm gonna use the crease brush with a strength of one and gonna use a really sharp fall off curve. And then I am trying to add some of those scratches um, on the outer ring also, but on the inner ring and making it look like um, it kind of slices through the metal part and the wooden part. And in the end, we only can, or the only thing we left is the handle. So here again, I'm gonna go into sculpting mode, turn on dynamic topology. I'm gonna use a higher resolution of 100 this time to start with because it's a really small object. And then uh, just go over with uh, the flatten brush again to give it some more topology and smoothing it out with the shift, uh, with shift or the smooth brush, whatever you want. Um, I think you should know by now how that works, I hope at least. And then uh, I'm gonna use the blob brush to add some more kind of, some more depth and also decrease it in the middle of the handle, like the place where um, it's hold, giving it more normal look and then we're good. So I hope you liked this video and in the next one we can do the UV editing and baking normal maps.